and welcome. Good day. Happy modding. Thank you for joining on this fine day. Uh, we have the summer mod jam began yesterday, which is great. Um, and yeah, jumping right into the stream content as usual. Hey, Gonzo, thank you. It's so great to see you. I'm glad you're here, my man. Um, and thank you for the sound check as usual. We'll check that off. As usual, mad props go to the artists who made the tunes that, you know, keep me in the zone. Um, and yeah, uh, props also to uh, user Sophie, who submitted the issue on GitLab, requesting to put the Tamra Rebuilt soundtrack uh, on the mod list. And I'm totally down with that. And I hope soon we'll be able to do something like that um, with some in-progress merge request that's coming for Lua. So yeah, anyway, not to get too off the deep end too soon here. Uh, <laughs> we only just begun. I'll leave that there. Sound check. We're good. I wanted to take a quick look at a n another neat non- neat non Morrowind thing, which would be, if I just tab over to the right thing here, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, <clears throat> excuse me again, Fallout 2 Community Edition. Um, and so this is a project that is based on a reverse engineering of the Fallout 2 executable um, with fixes and improvements and things you might find in certain mods integrated directly into the engine. Um, if you like the old school Fallout games, this is awesome. Like... Yeah, oh wow, this is amazing, Gonzo says. Yeah, well, uh, there's also, I just want to add, the same individual has spearheaded Fallout 1 Community Edition. And we won't go too far off that deep end, but I will end it by showing a little bit of this in action. I want it to, hopefully it's not super loud. Oh no. Hang on. Turn the volume down just a bit. War. War never changes. The end of the world occurred pretty much as we did. All right, enough of that. We've all heard that. Yeah, right? Gonzo says, oh man, I missed that Black Eye logo. Yes, indeed. I guess they live on kind of as Obsidian nowadays, which has been assimilated into the Microsoft. I'll just go ahead and BS a character here. You wouldn't normally do what I'm doing, but I'm just going to make a very charismatic random. Yeah, no name. I don't care. Actually, just start the game. Just want to get in game here and kind of show. Everybody, if you haven't seen Fallout 1 or Fallout 2, I mean, yeah, you're in for a treat. Try these games. They're a little brutal. Um... But yeah, I mean, this is it. So this is the native Linux executable I compiled from this repository I just showed. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. There's a couple config files you can use to tweak things. So, so I set to double resolution here. Should actually be like half the size if you think that's small. Um, and yeah, so I encourage you, excuse me, if you got an itch for some OG Fallout uh, style stuff, check that out. I think they provide executables for Windows and uh, Android too even. Although, I don't know. I mean, maybe it's doable on a touch-only interface, but uh, <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. All right. So, cool. Um, today, we're going to kind of have just a brief list that I'll fill in as we work. Um, but in a nutshell, we're going to do an issues review. Quite a few issues got closed as a result of last week's work on um, auto-cleaning and stuff like that. Um, we have the big, long-fabled CFG generator refactor is underway and happening, actually happening. Um, the only thing not really implemented at this point would be list-specific usage notes, but um, we'll get into that momentarily, and uh, then we'll do the second half of the stream, as has been the tradition as of late. Excuse me again, with the 6.x mod issue roundup, and then... Uh, we will deploy the beta website as needed. Um, some of this experimental code here is on the beta right now, but uh, if you go to visit the CFG generator, it's broken, so beware. <laughs> All right, um, so yeah, going into the issues review, uh, Gonzo, actually, I figured some of these, so I actually, like, spammed a bunch of tabs, but I figured, you know, some of these, including a lot of them that I opened, um, I think can be, you know, I think they can be closed like this one. By Azura updated has new paths. I'm thinking like, no, 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 no. Whoops. 
I'm failing to open a new window. Oh well. Um. No. Can just control N. Let's take a look. All right, and what do I actually have? Okay. Um, okay. I guess this is, you know, this is one of those ones that has a couple options, right? And really, like, uh, oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, mature audiences only. I guess it's good I have that warning. <laughs> um, but yeah, so take a look at this image and note there's nude content in this model. Uh, nude body parts. Yeah, whoops. <laughs> nude body parts. Hopefully we're all adults and we can handle that thing. Um, but open the preview.png image. Decide for yourself, you know, which one you like. I think a reasonable default would be um, these two probably. And then I myself, I like the revealing robe. So, yeah, so I think we'll say that and then we'll leave like a usage note. Um, just saying, you know, yeah, use, I guess just use any other ones or, hmm, I don't know, like, yeah, this, uh, this definitely gets in the realm of subjectivity. And I think somebody who wants to decide, like, I want the revealing robe topless model, they can, you know, they can work that out themselves. So in any case, we need to update that. Um, <laughs> oh, well, you know, so this is something that is going to go uh, in with the 5.10 update. And that one is going to be, as I mentioned before, it's going to be a bit of a doozy of an update because, again, we've got uh, CFG generator refactor going on. Um, and I'm not going to branch. I don't think I'm going to branch off unless there's something like extremely critical, um, you know. Obviously, it's good to have the right information for this mod, but I don't think it's like something people can't figure out for, for now until we get this wrapped up, which might take, I think, to get all the data cleaned up and everything might take a week or so. Um, so anyway, I will fix the data right now, though, and we'll put the right thing in there and make it accurate. And uh, if anybody asks on Discord, we can help them out as usual. Okay. Uh, all right. Yeah, so this feels a little silly because I actually, as I mentioned... I'm in the process of implementing the new C refactored CFG generator. And so this is, I guess, a little bit of a preview of that. Um, and what we have here is basically the new format for how we're going to represent uh, data for folder paths on the website. And so you'll see this is a pretty good example because it's pretty comprehensive here. We have um, if so a single folder path entry might look something like this. At minimum, it'll look like this for something with no extra folders that's not on any, you know, um, mod lists. Simple, as usual. Just this bit really is extra. Um, but so what we have here is, yeah, obviously from mod indicates the mod that the folder path is from. If there's any extra folders, and so what I mean by this is like, if we had here, you know, a foo folder that had, you know... meshes we would say core foo this doesn't mean core high res then goes here high res would actually get its own entry because it is a separate data path this is just how we tell my uh you know data analyzer code to do nested folders right so we got a foo inside of a core that's how we would represent that um there are not actually many cases of mods that do this but, um, you know, put that in there now while we're building it, I figured. So, um, yeah, and then obviously on lists means what mod lists is it on. And this gives us the ability, jumping ahead now, <laughs> um, this gives us the ability to do something like, uh, let's see here. What's a good one for this? Uh, I know, uh, my favorite distant, my favorite... 
bundle of hacks, distant seafloor for OpenMW. So what you have now is um, with this new setup, not only will we have a CFG generator code base that is free of hacks, completely free of hacks, and will be boring, but we have a view of mods that looks something like this, where we have, this is called the mod detail view, and eventually I'm going to put a piece of text on here that says, you know, you're looking at the mod detail, this is not containing modless specific information, it's everything. But then you might click this button right here. And this would take you to the mods place on total overhaul. And don't pay attention to the usage notes because as I said, we haven't gotten there to changing that yet. But what you'll note here, compared to here, is that, uh, and also we didn't get to the folder paths yet. It's still a work in progress. But you'll note, instead of all the plugins here, just blah, and then telling you, hey, by the way, now it's boom only these or if you were to for example click iheart vanilla which uses a different set of plugins it will show you the, the different correct plugins just for this mod list so finally i think this is one of the biggest problems of the website is confusing multiple bits of information on the webpage. we'll be able to make everything concise everything that's so slick kinds of says thank you sir i appreciate it you know um I put off doing this for a while because it seemed like it was going to be a lot of work. And indeed, it's not a small change. But um, turns out doing it right is a, is a bit more simple than doing it, you know, in a crappy, hacky way. And um, I was a little concerned about potential performance implications, you know, right? We don't want to cause the page to load more slowly. Um, but actually, excuse me, the um, the pages that are sensitive to performance would be like this page. And uh, they are unaffected because we don't... Uh, you know, there's no information about plugins on here, really, so no problems there. Uh, and this page itself, you know, yeah, no, no issues. Like, if you want to get real technical here, we can just open the network tab, disable cache, control R, and so almost two seconds to get to grab everything with my slowest thing being... I think a collective of things here, JavaScript and pictures mostly. So yeah, anyways, uh, without getting too off the deep end there, uh, this is what Gonzo and I have been crunching on for the past day or so. And uh, props to Gonzo, who's like really um, just like plowed through the plugin data to help indicate what plugins go on what mod list and all that. I mean, I'm scrolling through here and I'm just blown away like how much is there compared to what I left with. So uh, Gonzo started at the bottom and just work its way up, and yeah, just boom, it's awesome. So we have a long way to go, and as I said, you know, we got the folder paths here, which are almost entirely still undone. You know, I'm just going through. So I actually left off last night before I fell asleep to a humongous thunderstorm, doing um, basically just going through data, not this one, obviously, but hey, just looking for where we have folder paths, kind of like I'm... Uh, gonna throw in here you know something like this and then taking this out and putting it in here you know as a oh that wouldn't be in here come on you know and putting it in here like this so eventually I'll come here and I'll you know redo that in this format but yeah so anyway back to Bizer it looks like I actually have the right thing yeah we're already suggesting to people a sane default and and you know if you want to you can optionally load any of the other paths after these that's right um if you use my openmw validator tool and for example you um load let's say all of these there's a good chance that some of these will load the ones overwrite completely overwrite the ones that are loaded uh previously and so you just delete them but if you don't do that it will hurt nothing you could enable all of these and probably end up with a revealing robe, topless, high res, Azura. Uh, yeah, so anyways, um, the whole reason for going down that is, uh, this is just, I don't even, I opened this. I don't have to do myself the courtesy of explaining why I'm closing it. Um, so this one, we no longer even have staff spell stat buffs buffs anymore we just have the combat pack um and the path is right
I am on a issue closing frenzy, by the way. Um, Gonzo and I have been, and we are. If I just check here, we're at one hundred three open issues. So yeah, less than one hundred issues. Here we come. We may have this in a few minutes, even. Um, but this has been one of the project goals for a couple weeks now. One of the low-hanging fruit goals, of course, you know, just to give ourselves a, a reasonably cool milestone to have. Uh, but we're getting there for sure. Um, so anyway, <clears throat> alchemical hustle updated. 5.3. <laughs> that was a minute ago. So let's hop on over here. Let's see what we got. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure this is another one that we modular TR add on. Yeah. Uh, no, no, I'm sorry. Modular merged. I can read. I promise. Um, and this is indeed, I think, what I have on my setup. Just in a slightly different order, but uh, we will get to fixing that. All right. So, yeah, this one can be... This is another one I opened. Just closing it out. 102. Oh, boy. Very hyped. <laughs> okay. LDM Context Matters, another one that I opened here. This is really... I feel like this sound that's on here, song that's on here, Tomes by ASCII, I don't know if y'all can hear it, but this is like perfect for like going through old issues right now. I feel like we're spelunking in GitLab. <laughs> 1.7, okay. And so, NPCs. Yeah, yeah, we're up to date. We are up to date. So, let's go ahead and uh, close. Yeah, wow. Six months ago, even. Whew. Closed. One oh one. Here we go. Beautiful cities of Morwin got updated. Gonna. I think I'm gonna close this out. Um. website is presently up to date and before I click submit on that let's just go ahead and look now um, one of the changes we got coming in 6.x is not simply a new mod addition but it is a change to how we do an existing mod which would be this one and uh, as we talked about in previous streams, we're going to be doing the uh, the waterworks packages. So we will see a change here, but I consider this up to date for the current configuration. So yeah, last updated uh, back in, I believe we did this on a stream back in May. So Yahoo. All right, I'm going to. <clears throat> oh my <laughs> all right 100 here we go all right and uh 5.3 okay six months ago So, still keep it in the website database. Either keep it in the website database and note that it's no longer provided, 
Right, I think the I think we should update upload the excuse me, update the download page to be nothing, I think is good. Yeah, so let's do All right. And erase that. Cool. So this is another one I think we're going to go ahead and uh Definitely want to leave people with the impression that they can open more issues. Please feel free. We're very happy now to officially be below 100 issues. Props. Congratulations. Thank you, Gonzo, for, uh, and her tracks and everybody else for pitching in and helping make it a thing, you know. And thank you for everybody for opening issues. Time to celebrate. I know, right? Cheers. Take a sip of your beverage of choice. Warm or cold, depending on what time of day it is or what your mood is. <laughs> um, and I, as I was saying, too, don't uh, like, yay, we're celebrating. We're at 99. Somebody could open two issues right now and put us back at 100, and that's fine. You know, don't feel like, oh, no, I can't, I can't open another issue. I'll put those guys back up. No, don't worry about it. All right. Um, so anyway, but we're continuing to go through my list anyway, so maybe we can get well below 100. <laughs> Should load after the main BC on plugin. Okay, um, you know what? I'm closing this because we are gonna defer to um We're deferring to MLOX, you know. Um and MLOX is correct. We can go in game right now with the current load order and we won't see uh you know, this issue where the the flickering overlapping thing is. Now I'm not a hundred percent sure if something isn't broken in the mod you know it's been a long time since I've done Saboteur Facility but um I know people doing the Wabajack have done some mind-blowing uh hey Eltariel welcome I'm so glad you're here <laughs> Saboteur is so jank yeah it's one of those um it's one of those older mods for sure right um <laughs> uh yeah so anyway I was just saying the Wabajack folks though they've done like a superb job of reviewing regions with a fine tooth comb giving me awesome feedback don't think they got to it yet, but yeah, I'm kind of dreading like <laughs> what kind of stuff is going to come up with it. You know, it very well could be like one of the ones that we perhaps kind of like retire in all honesty. Um, just because like, I don't know, it's mod jam right now. It's literally raining mods. I'm like, got to get an umbrella, you know, so it's not like we're hurting for quest stuff. Although what's on here is fun. Nowadays, we have such a rich wealth of well thought out, well written content. It's getting really dark. Hold on a sec. All right, maybe you can see me a little better. Ah, as I was saying, we have so much good content nowadays, you know, like, yeah, you know, we're not going to hurt too much if we remove Saboteur. So, anyway, it's on the table. I've been talking privately with Herdrax and others about, like, how to make the quest section a little more flexible for people to kind of pick and choose things. Uh, Altario says, I think the understanding of what is vanilla friendly has evolved quite a bit since Saboteur was made and it feels out of place in the mod list now. I do agree. I do agree, especially alongside like incredibly polished, well thought out content that we have again available today. So yeah. Um, Something to consider for 6.x, and maybe we will end up, after all, having a kind of a retirement section. Um, and Saboteur might be on the list, because, yeah. It was fun, but, yeah. So, anyway, closing this up, um, given that. Uh, not even really going to comment it, I don't think. Saboteur is pretty cool, though. Right, so we got to discuss this, right? Um, despite the jank, despite being, you know, kind of early 2000s kind of mod, you know, which if you're not familiar, uh, sort of with the distinction back in the day, people made mods and like, sure, they weren't like trying to put like, you know, masters of the universe directly into Morrowind, but like sometimes, you know, it wasn't too far off <laughs> and you saw some liberties being taken. We'll just say, um, 
so I'm not saying saboteur facility takes bad liberties or anything like that, but like, yeah, just if you fly over there in the map, for example, there's a tower like on a port and there's like, I don't know, 60 lights right out there, you know, like, uh, I don't think I would reasonably design a tower like that. You know, somebody was just having fun with the CS, I think. So moving on though, um, magical lights for Telvani 2.0. I think we're, I think we're now up to date on this, uh, Let's take a look. Beautiful mod, by the way. I love it. Love, love, love it. This is one, I feel like, by the way, something I started to do on the 6.x list was, like, recategorize things. Like, for example, I want to... We have flora and landscape. I want to have flora and landscape as separate categories, right? And this is one, it's like, well, is it... It's an architecture, okay. Is it a light, though? They're lights? I don't know. Definitely open to, um, oh, 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 did I already move it on my local, actually? I think I already did. Gonzo says, I can't really disagree, disagree with El Tario, though it does feel a little misplaced for high quality, almost the rest of the mods on the mod list are. Yeah, for sure. Even even other classics like um, Mask of the Hortator, I've done that one a few times, actually, and it's cool, but, like, compared, for example, to MD's, um... MD has a quest. The name is escaping, escaping me, but you get a Daedric mask, one of the unused ones, and it's awesome. And the quest is cool, and it's well thought out. Um, kind of like Sotha Sil expanded in that way. Gonzo says, "Yeah, for sure." I actually haven't played SSE. It's like on my. You need to try this when you're not, you know, too much of a chicken list. <laughs> but uh, maybe my next playthrough. I don't know. Um, but yeah, you know, I I think it it might have to go into the Hall of Fame or something. Train Wiz is Steampunk City. Oh, yeah, Herdrax. Altario says, yeah, Train Wiz is Steampunk City. Herdrax told me about that one, actually. Linked me to it. I'd never actually seen it. And, wow, that's some crazy stuff. We have to cover that on the stream sometime when I get my uh, game PC over here. Gonzo says you should really check it out. It's really cool regarding SSE. Yeah, for sure. I need to. Rumor had it that uh, there was going to be an update. I don't know. Maybe we'll see it yet. Uh, so anyway, back on track here. I did, it looks like, no. Where did it, so where did I put this? Oh yeah, here we go, Magical Lights. So I did, <laughs> I was reading my past self's mind when I was ranting about the, you know, is this the right category here? And it seems, I personally have decided for myself that it belongs under lighting. I don't know. Certainly food for thought. Might be a good opportunity to clean up some of the nonsensical categories that past me picked for reasons of just not wanting to think about it too much. Gonzo says, I liked almost all of it except for the really bad dungeon design, to be blunt, in SSE. Interesting. So what, what I've heard from some people is that there's like gotchas, we'll call them. Instant deaths, just things like, whoops, you're dead, things like that. And uh, mm, it's not exactly my speed, really. Um, I don't know. Maybe that's fun, or maybe it's not exactly like that. So anyway, I think we're main core. Okay, so yeah, we are actually not up to date on this. So... Oh, Altariel says, there is a retracted version of SSC that makes it easier to, do, to enjoy. Yeah, you know, I think that's... So I think that's one of the ones that we got to, you know... Just check out on the stream sometime. Yeah, Gonzo, I should check that out. Yeah, we should just check it out on the stream sometime. Um, I installed SSE once and got as far as, like, running the command they give you because I put it into an existing save. Uh, and there was, at least at one time, a way where you could use a console command, get yourself in there correctly um, to begin the quest. And I did that and took, like, a look around, but then I was like, uh, no, I don't want to do this. And went on with the rest of, you know, Blood Moon or whatever without uh, Tomb of the Snow Prince. Uh, back in those days. Anyway, what? so what do I got here? Oh, AAB. Oh, right. Okay. Okay. And what am I using in my... So there's two different versions you can get now. That's right. Magical Lights. Oh, AAB. I'm inclined to just go with this one just because everything out of that project is solid gold. But let's see what I got. Magical light. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm using the OAAB one. Yeah, so, I mean, <clears throat> excuse me. This is a, another one of those things where it's like, uh, you know, you could go, 
You could really go either way. So what are we saying on the website? Yeah, here you go. Okay, yeah. Cool. Okay, so actually we are up to date. And this is just because in my own setup, I wanted to have them both. So I could quickly, you know, switch and see what they look like. You know, uh, for testing and stuff. So normal users, you folks, wouldn't necessarily have this folder set up unless, like me, you wanted to check them both out. I encourage you to do so, too. It's worth the time. I digress. I'm going to go ahead and... finally did it. I'm still like kind of in, uh, you know, a little uh, sub 100 days here. 97. Woo. All right. Excuse me. Tools of Kagernak. Actually, I know this one updated somewhat recently. Awesome mod, by the way, by Shadow Mimicry. Love the models and the texture work. Really loving this one. Uh, so, okay. Main and uh, weapons. All right. One point one is what I got. One of these days, I'm going to switch back to a keyboard navigable browser. Not today. And not tomorrow, either. <laughs> All right. Latest version, 1.1. Update. Okay, so... Hey, Smalio, you made it. I hope you're doing okay out there. All right, so I think I, I have them both, so... Let's see. Hmm. So yeah, this is where my local setup does not uh, does not reflect the actual folder pass. I should just Gonzo says looks like retracted fixes some of the major issues, but not the beef I have with the mod. Interesting. Got to look at them both. I think, in fairness, at some point, not today or tomorrow. All right. Um. So yeah, let's see. It looks like then. Hmm. Well, so the issue that uh, Niccolo has raised here, I think, is not current, but there is still some inconsistency with what we have on the website. The tools of Kagernak. Here we go. Also, I think it's time to lower my desk. Please excuse me. Mike, I can handle it. Here we go. All right. Okay, actually, maybe I was wrong. Um, so we want sheath and glow. Okay, yeah, so since Niccolo posted that issue it looks like the mod was updated the casing is the same but i think um 
to work around what Niccolo said for um, 0.48, you would simply have separate folder paths for them. It would be fine, right? It doesn't matter if one's capital F or one is, you know, lower F. OpenMW's VFS in 0 0.49 is not case sensitive anymore. So um, any such issue would be moot, I think. Or it would be perhaps boiled down to your file system. I don't actually know what happened, but I highly doubt you would have a problem in any case. So the website is current. I don't think we need to make any change about this. And I'm going to go ahead and update Niccolo and just say, hey, we're good to go now. Ooh, so yeah, I think this is a uh, this is a good one, and I think this is uh, one that we addressed looking at the issue settiness raised about casing and stuff like that. Yet as soon as you start OpenMW Launcher, it removes the content line from your config. Setting a content line manually with the lowercase, so it removes the uppercase, setting it manually with the lowercase, doesn't end up in the line being removed, but I have no idea if it ends up picking the right plugin either. What I know is that removing the plugin from the base mod path makes capitalized work and OpenMW Launcher no longer removes the config entry. It's definitely a bug in OpenMW, and I will report it upstream. Hmm. Well. Oh, and he sure did. Let's take a look. Still open. Just skimming through this here. We're not going to review every comment, but... Uh yeah, yeah, so this is a bug, as of yet unresolved. Not going to close this one. Um, I think from our end, though, it's worth it to write on the website, perhaps. Um, tell folks on mod lists that they should erase the plugin from Virus Legacy. So let's actually see what we say. Let's see what we say right now. Okay. We say skip it. I almost feel like that's not explicit enough and we should say delete it. And I think I'm going to make that change. And by the way, this is one... Thanks, Gonzo. Appreciate the plus one. Said Gonzo says, "Yeah, good idea." This is another one, by the way, that I'm thinking belongs in a player home category. Gonzo says, "Might as well be totally clear if there's any ambiguity." Right, exactly. And that's one thing I've started to learn too is like things that are unambiguous to me may be ambiguous to others, and uh, frankly, be, are ambiguous to me when I look at it again. This is ambiguous to me. Can skip it is sort of ambiguous, right? Like. So we'll go ahead and say delete it. And yeah, we'll put this mod, eventually we'll move it into um, player homes category because it's not, um, yeah, it makes it sound optional, Gonzo says. Yeah, for sure. You, Virus Legacy, like technically you only, spoiler alert, if you've never done House Telvani, I guess plug your ears for a couple seconds. <laughs> um, you know, you don't technically get Televirith unless you do Great House Telvani, right? But it's like more of the, it's less about the faction, I think. Um, I mean, there's tons of content there, though. So anyway, I don't know. It's debatable. <laughs> Certainly consider moving that to player home. I've already done it on my local setup. So anyway, without getting too far off the deep end there. Whoa, hold up, hold up. If 
following a mod list, delete the blah plugin. There you go. And yeah, I'm just gonna lump this into my branch with the CFG generator rewrite. So, ooh, all right. And uh, not so I'm not gonna close this one out just yet, but I will close the tab. Uh oh yeah. So uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Hanzo, but I think we solved this a couple of weeks ago. This was one of the fun CFG generator hacks that we carried along for a few weeks. Uh, so I think I'm gonna close this. If you're cool. Um, I think I just forgot to tag it in a commit. But uh, let's see. Let's look at the CFG generator just for posterity. Did we fix this? Yeah, I think we did. I think we did. So the fix was to just use the BCOM provided um, area effect arrows patch. Yeah. So what we do here is area. Yeah. So you can see here. Yeah, we did fix that. So here we got this one comes from BCOM. And if I just, yeah, BCOM patches area of effect arrows. Yep. 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 So, um. Yeah, I think we're good on this one. I'm going to close it out, Gonzo. Nice. Thumbs up from Gonzo. Close it. Feels so productive today. I always love closing stuff <laughs> or deleting code. Can't wait to delete code from the CFG generator. It's going to be glorious. All the hacky code you've ever seen in any stream is going bye-bye. How is that happening, Johnny? Wow, I'm glad you asked. Let me explain. You see, with the new code, as I've demonstrated earlier in the stream and showed with the, uh, <laughs> with the new code, hang on. We have a system now where we can say not only we specifically know have a relationship of mods and the files they provide, what plugin a mod is from, but we also have a, a data based relationship with mod lists. So we know exactly what mod list a plugin is used on or none at all but also there's more we can also and actually I think I did come we also have the ability to say a plugin conflicts with a certain mod or it depends on a certain mod and this is a neat feature uh, it doesn't do anything for mod list users per se. However, if you were looking to customize a mod list or make your own mod list, you can do that. Yes, you can. If you were looking to do that, this would be a lot of help to you because we could give those folks warnings like, hey, by the way, you need this one and not this one when you got Tomb of the Snow Prince and things like that. Um, we're not totally fleshing this out right away. It's like a heroic amount of effort to do something like this. And this is something that will build out over time. But I want to be able to encourage people to make their own mod lists, right? Or you got total overhaul and you want to, like, remove something but, like, have a record of it, you know? Um, a link that you can share with your friends or whatever. You know? Um, just past line 1500. Nice, Godzo. Heroic effort helping me update this very file right here even. Um, and, and also, just a note, congratulations to Gonzo for his uh, first commit to the commit code. Uh, is going to be in the pull request for 5.10. So, yeah, props to Gonzo. Big thanks. Um, 
And yeah, so 5.10, again, it's going to be a bit of a big update, but we're doing this, and this is going to resolve all of those. Mini commit, well, yeah, you did. <laughs> it was a lot of, you know, data changes are tough because they're hard, if not impossible, to automate stuff like this, really. You know, um, we could automate, but we would spend as much time automating it as we could do, uh, spend doing it by hand. And then it's just like... There's a redundancy to it that can cause errors, you know? So you want to be careful, go slow, and things like that. And yeah. Um, so yeah. Uh, and I was going to go here to uh, to show the implementation of all that. But it's, I think, better... This is the Python implementation of all that. But I think it's better shown by, yeah, actually, the data itself. So yeah. Uh, clarify usage notes on signpost retextured. I think we did this. Yeah, updated date. Ooh, I'm so glad we do that. <laughs> I think we did this, man, right? But you still need to download the appropriate optional file for the TR meshes and textures. I think this was the bit. Yep. Close it. All right, clarify language surrounding port mod support. I think we did this too. Maybe. Yeah, I remember talking about this with Gonzo on this very stream uh, a while ago now, I think. I don't know, Gonzo, are you happy with the language we got here right now? I am, I think. Um, as far as our active development, port mod scripts specifically for the mod list on this website have not yet been made, and they are always looking for contributors to help keep, keep things up to date. I think this pretty well defines that, you know, we're loosely related. Benjamin's one of my buddies. Deeply respect his work. Um, and all the contributors to port mod, Pope Rigby, you know, props all your con contributions to the repo and stuff. Um, but, uh, you know, we're not, like, officially working together, you know. And as much as I would love to do that, I just, you know, I would need to clone myself. <laughs> and so Gonzo says, yeah, we did this also. I was a little unclear about how port mod works, actually. Are the mod lists officially supported by port mod, but maybe not updated? Okay, yeah, so I'll clarify on that, actually. Uh, good question, Gonzo. Um, so port mod, let's see if we can actually... PortMod has this notion of meta packages. And if you've used Linux before and are familiar with a Linux package manager, they have a similar concept. You might have a Java meta package that points to Java 1.8, or they can change it to point to Java 10.11 or whatever. And so a PortMod meta package is sort of like that. You have, for example, an expanded vanilla meta package I'm trying to see if I can find the package sets. Here we go. You have, it, like, for example, a, an expanded vanilla meta package that has, in theory, all the mods from expanded vanilla. And you could do the same for any mod list. You know, you could make a Gonzo's Greatest Hits list, and it would have everything on there, including uh, Morrowind 2, which everybody knows would be on there. And the Hunto Sama mod, of course. <laughs> so anyway, that that's what the mod lists are in port mod. It's like a thing that you can install, right? So in port mod, you would do uh, sort of a uh, install command to install a mod. And a meta package is just a thing you would install that installs the whole mod list, like a Wabajack, kind of. Yeah, they've been doing that for a while. It's one of the reasons why I think port mod is brilliant. It's just so tightly modeled after the Gen 2 package manager that it's just like, I've been using Linux for 15 years and I still don't like really get port mod completely, you know, because I haven't taken the deep dive. I haven't like fully committed, you know, you got to like jack yourself into the matrix kind of a thing and just I haven't done it yet so in any case I hope that answers your question Gonzo um the idea being that yeah you got a just a quick boom one command install like a wabjack and much like a we well, yeah, yep it does Gonzo says cool yeah much like a wabjack port mod has all kinds of sauce under the hood that will do things like back when we used to need to fix meshes for shininess port mod will do that I think still can do that um in the recipes you know um so yeah we're gonna go ahead and close this oh wait 
this isn't the one I wanted to close, but this one is. My bad, Gonzo. We're going to look at that one, though. I think we'll still probably close that as something that we did. No, we didn't do that. Whoops, my bad. Reopened it. <laughs> yep, big whoops there. Uh, okay, I so I didn't actually like really look closely at this one. I just kind of like was opening stuff. Seemed like a candidate for closing, and this is not. I don't think this one is done yet. So, um, so let's actually look at what we're talking about here. Let's visualize this, eh? Start here. Okay. Yeah, so. A kind of overarching section on how to actually use the pages and what to look out for, Gonzo says. Agreed. Yeah. I think I mentioned this a few times on various streams, you know. Um, you get a, actually, I'm, I don't, I'm not really like... I have a high-level grasp of what traffic to the website looks like, but I don't have my sort of finger on the pulse of the user base really as much. I don't pay attention too much to MMC Discord, not really paying attention to Reddit, you know, I'm kind of a I'm kind of a hermit, honestly, despite being here talking to you now. So I'm not really sure like exactly who the user base is, but I get a lot of feedback from people and I'm aware that there are quite a lot of new people coming in. Maybe some of these new people have used MO2 before, maybe they played, you know, New Vegas or Skyrim, you know, and so they have like a notion of what to do, but maybe they don't really understand uh, the various concepts. And indeed, as we've seen recently with, um, you know, the, the Rye Mash fan club that's come into Discord, our man Simon Prime, there is kind of a disconnect between people coming in and like not knowing about OpenMW features. And I think it is worth it to uh, to have some literature on that. Gonzo says, I think I'll take some time to expand upon this issue and write a mock-up. Sweet. I love that. Um, that'd be great. As usual, let me know if you need uh, any help or anything. And yeah, we'll get that in there. Maybe even in 5.10. We'll see. Seems like a nice <laughs> thing to take a break from the data update from. Cool. So yeah, not done. Cleaning mods. Yeah. So one of the things I wanted to do actually um, is produce a concise video for stuff like this, how to use Delta plugin, but I wanted to get like a Windows virtual machine and, and do it from that because I think the majority of users, you know, if we just see here, modding, the majority of our users are on Windows and okay, my how to use the launcher to install a mod video I think is OS agnostic enough that it doesn't matter. I did it on Linux with a weird setup. People can get value out of it. But for something like using a command line program, using Delta plugin, cleaning mods, I, I think it really like, you know, we need to... 69%, yeah. <laughs> the meme number, yeah. And you can see that's a clear majority, though. Most people are coming from Windows, and so I think if I'm going to do a video for cleaning or using the command line, you know, doing it from Linux would not be pretty useful, I think, for these folks. And then, uh, you know, I hate to generalize, but if you're using Linux, you know, 1% Internet Explorer, yeah, 33 people. Who are you people? Hold on. Internet Explorer 11. So at least it's like a reasonably recent, at least we're not seeing like IE8 in here, although that would be kind of epic. I will note that I routinely see Pale Moon outnumber even Edge in here. You'll note Edge isn't in here at all. Edge is like outnumbered by Internet Explorer even. That's kind of sad. <laughs> I use Edge for work. True story. I'm sure you can figure it out with any issues, but if you need help navigating that, let me know what Don Gonzo says. Yeah, cool. Um, isn't Edge... Just group with Chrome. Edge is actually uh, Eltario S. Uh, yes, Edge is basically just based on Chrome. Um, like Opera is, like, like tons of stuff is basically. It's Chrome under the hood. Um, I can't believe it's not Chrome. It's like a my. I use it for work, as I said, and it's like a Microsofty Chrome. It's like Chrome with like Microsoft icing on top. <laughs> as awesome as that sounds. <laughs> wow, that sounds terrible. But that's what it is. 
I can't believe it's not Chrome. Yeah, <laughs> I can't really. It's like if you swapped the Googleness for Microsoftness. Hmm? And I'll leave it at that. So yeah, uh, what to be on the lookout for? Cool use. I don't think all of this stuff warrants a video, but I do think like cleaning mods and how to use Delta plugin could stand to have just a quick, you know, blam, this is what you open up. And again, do it on Windows, you know, for those unaware. Um, I just got to like, you know, I think Microsoft. Last time I checked, Microsoft actually offered free, ver yeah, download a Windows virtual machine. Which I think is, you know. Yeah, here you go. So you got a couple of different options here. Um, Hyper-V. So I would probably just get like a ugh, virtual box. Ugh. I bet you could like use some tooling to convert like the virtual, uh, the VMware image to be run with QMU. But we try to do it with QMU maybe. Um, I don't know. If VirtualBox performs well enough, we would use that. But yeah, anyway, I would download one of these and then, you know, just Windows for a day, right? Turn into a pumpkin at the end of the night and delete it. Uh, oh, actually, it's good until October. Yeah, so, you know, they have some process where they, like, tag these and you only get them for a certain amount of time. I think there's even probably, like, a watermark nag on there, but I would do something like this. I'm not going to install Windows on my laptop. But a virtual machine I can stomach. Yeah, evaluation version of Windows. So we would do something like this, and, and it would be good. I think it would be good to have a demonstration for folks that are not used to doing command line stuff, you know. And it's really important to make sure that they can do that easily because, okay, you could do a iHeart Vanilla and skip Delta plugin, and it's not the end of the world, but, man, <laughs> you don't want to – any other setup, you basically don't want to, you know, you don't want to skip that. Bad things will happen. Okay, wow. So we're rounding out the first hour, and uh, we're under our 100 issues. I could keep going, honestly. There's probably other stuff here I could close. Um, I'm going to round it off at that. Um, we haven't done any gameplay thus far. Um, oh, yeah, and I wanted to... <laughs> way back, uh, like, 20 minutes ago, I was kind of ranting about why, how this is possible, and so let's just do a demonstration here. And so what you're looking at here is uh, Python console. And this is me sort of interacting with the guts of the website, the database, okay? And so I can do stuff like this. Where now, what you're looking at here is this line of code here says for a single data path, in all of the total overhaul data paths, print the Linux data path. And this isn't all the data paths. As I said, we're kind of in the middle of translating it. But this is basically what the code's going to look like. Instead of all the hacky nonsense garbage that I've complained and cried about in previous streams, we're just going to have, boom, this. Gonzo says, wow, this is so slick. Yeah, I know. It feels great. It's like finally happening. And the same goes for plugins, right? Here. For P in yeah, I already did this. For P in mod plugin, one day modernize, give me non BSAs, non ground covers, so only content files. Again, this is not everything. Stuff like this is gonna go away. But you get the idea. No more hacks. No more confusing instructions that don't apply to you that you have to ignore, but read the ones that do apply to you. None of that anymore. Um so yeah, good things are coming, good things are happening, and uh, big thanks to Gonzo again for helping me kind of trudge through all this data editing. You know, most of the code changes involved here are kind of building the new way of, of reading and showing the data, but it's also a lot of just deleting crap and changing data, so um, it's going to end up being kind of a boring change. It's exciting. CFG generator, finally going to get boring. All right. We got to go back to this here. Issues review. Check. Um, so I'm not sure what I kind of hoped we would get done here regarding this, but I think just kind of talking about the plans and demonstrating them, uh, achieves my goal for that. <clears throat> excuse me. Ooh, excuse me. Oh my. All right. 
I'm okay. Uh, uh, okay. So, I think it's that time again, friends. And I actually wanted to take a moment today and add some content six dot, and remind viewers and everybody else, 6.x is not just total overhaul changes. It's all the mod lists. Some of these are going to get added to um, many of them. Almost all of them are going to get added to Expanded Vanilla also, some to Graphics Overhaul, some to One Day Modernize. And there's going to be some, actually, that only apply to iHeart Vanilla, actually. It's true. And I want to add those right now, and we can take a quick look at them, even though they're ones that we've looked at before. So the first one there is, let's see, interior, Morrowind Interiors Project. Um, eventually, I hope that we will have something like this on Total Overhaul. But for now, um, just due to the way that this is implemented, it's a little spicy in terms of compatibility. Uh, I'll fire it up momentarily and we can look at it and you'll see why. But it's also just beautiful. It really is just beautiful. And so I figured something like this is a really easy thing that will be a nice addition to uh, iHeart Vanilla. This is crazy, and I had no idea this was possible until I saw it in BCM. Gonzo Games says, what? you saw it in BCM. Interesting. Please tell me more. What in BCM did you see this in? Um, looking outside the windows. Because I'm drawing a blank on that. But anyway, so let's get to editing this, huh? Oh, in the Reno one that's not open. Yeah, sure. And actually, the Moleg Mar... Um, revamp that they added recently the the ruined molagmar has kind of a similar concept where it's the dome is enclosed uh but it's you know there's no interior cell which is you know i like that it's very nice okay uh so let's go ahead and do i have an architect oh no i don't And yeah, so mad props to Grumbling Vomit. I love this project. And I wish them success. And I hope that, because uh, it's OpenMW exclusive for various reasons, um, and I hope that eventually we can help make their job easier with Lua. And one way to do this, possibly, is uh, with the World Space feature that we looked at uh, last week. And by world spaces, I mean like if you've ever played Fallout New Vegas, for example, Camp McCarran, which is outside but not. But it's not a fake interior like in Morrowind. Stuff like that. Oblivion, Fallout 3, they all got world spaces. Haha. <laughs> Well, oh, really? Okay. Altario says he intends to cover TR Interials as well. Yeah, he does. I think he says that on here. It's, uh, you know, yeah, it's on the roadmap here. Boom. I mean, wow, you know, respect. This will take a while, but, uh, you know, I think projects like this are of huge scope are fine to take on. Everybody has their own workflow. You know, me personally, um, with the website, which is like the unending stream of stuff to do, because Morrowind modding is awesome, and we're constantly coming up with new stuff. It's just, you know, just pace yourself, and don't stress it too much, and have fun. It's the most important part, and so, yeah. Grumbling Vomit has a number of awesome projects, and I think they're having fun. I'm certainly having more fun because of them, so thank you. All right, yeah, so... A little bit of love for iHeart Vanilla. And we're going to note on here. Oh. All right, cool. Morrowind Interiors Project. 
So there we go. We did look at this uh, a few weeks ago. I'm going to look at it again. Very shortly here. And at the moment, I'm drawing a blank. I'm, oh, yeah, that's right. Uh -huh. I remember now. <laughs> this one is not just... I heart vanilla. I think I'm going to actually add this to... <laughs> All right, thank you, DuckDuckGo. Did you see the weather in my... My neck of the woods up here. It's like totally cloudy, but okay. Here we go. This one. Yeah, so uh, plays weather sound effects in interior cells, but not places like caves, ruins, etc., and places you wouldn't expect to hear them all with little or no FPS hit. So this is another one, too. Um, obviously, they could do this with MWSC Lua probably right now and have no issues. Compatible with everything. Um, Kirel has chosen not to do this. I guess maybe this came out before MWSC Lua existed, maybe? I know uh, you can find out in the comments. I think TellWow, user TellWow, has done a MWSE mod that does this properly, probably. For now, we can't quite do this. Um, there is a... a... No, 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 no. There is a... Yeah, open. Yeah, there is an issue open. That I've talked to some of you folks about right now. That may get us what we need here. Not on this page. Uh oh, cool. Gonzo says, Whoops, I think I just stumbled across a happy little accident opening an issue. Please do, my friend. And I'm curious what you found. All right, uh, let's see here. I'm trying to find a merge request that was opened by, I believe, Andre Kartanov for oh no I'm looking at issues I'm a dingus uh oh Gonzo has a link here he says let's see if you see it Whoops. Yeah, that's a boo-boo. We got to fix that. Let's do that right now. <laughs> cool. Thanks, Gonzo. Appreciate that. No issue necessary. Yeah, we're going to do that right now. Might as well. Do you think it's worth saying explicitly here that it has evil GMSTs? Hey, Section 8. Heidi ho, neighborino. I'm so glad you're here. Thanks for coming on. I hope you're having a lovely day. We are just getting on with uh, looking at new stuff. Happy day. Uh, cool, Gonzo says, yeah, it's worth mentioning. You must clean. Um, Slept in like a bear. Yeah, oh, I really wanted to, too. We had a really wicked storm last night. Like, I thought my house was going to blow over. Not really. <laughs> but it was close. <laughs> I think my petunias are dead now, though. Unfortunately. Uh, uh, evil GMSTs and a must be cleaned. Rest. Let's get explicit here. Not the petunias. Yeah, hey, you know, they look like peppermints. I love them. They're out on my porch, and any time I walk outside, it would just smell good. And they would look pleasing. Again, like peppermints. I like peppermints. All right. Um, yeah. We will be diligent and mention that it was updated. Yeah, 
All right. Thanks for pointing that out, Gonzo. Appreciate it. That's like we're down to like three plugins that need cleaning, and that's one of them, actually. So that puts us at like four, probably. But when 6.x is done, I think the total list is three. We'll see. That one does also have a weird script error in it that I've been meaning to ask Shadow Mimicry about, but I don't like bugging people. It's just like one of those, what were you wanting to do there things? Because it's not really clear. I think I talked about this before. It's like a missing variable or a misnamed variable. I don't know what their intent was. Section 8 says, a random thought, have the usage instructions for TES3 command been updated? Not in a minute. Um. Okay, like if you're just cleaning evil GMSTs, you should call it like that. So you mean on the actual page for, uh, on the on the website, right. So you mean on the, so like right here where I say, right here. Um. Delta does everything else right. So, okay, so let's take a step back here. Because I want your input on this as well. Maybe we should say that here on the actual page. I feel like very few people actually come to this page. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh... Ah, we could find out, actually. You know what? Hang on. We could see, at least, in the last week, how many people came here. Yeah. Nobody goes to that page. <laughs> nobody sees it. But anyway, we could say something here. I do say something here. But it is a little buried. A merged plugin produced by Delta Plugin will auto clean all dirty records with the exception of evil GMSTs. Maybe this should be like further up, but like, I don't know. It's like a little, to say it first feels like burying the lead a little bit, you know? I feel like you need to read all this before this will make sense to you. You know? That's why I put it there. And I kind of stand by that right now. I'm not going to die on that hill. I'm open to changing it, but. I feel like it does belong there, even if it is a little buried. Oh, I see. Okay, Section 8 says, What I mean, though, is that it literally has a evil GMST argument is all. So you're saying that should we, in our instructions for using TS3 command, use that argument specifically? Yeah, no, it's not. I mean, minor issue, but for hyper-specificity, yeah, I mean, you're right. Uh, it potentially is good. Um Keep that in mind uh, for when we actually get to doing the documentation for TS3 command and fleshing that out a little bit more. Because, you know, we've got, like, this page. It's a little disjointed, right? We have this page. Then we have, like, the um, page that I don't link to on here. But it's the um, tips page for cleaning. You'll note also I added some quick links down here, by the way. Finally remembered some things I wanted by category, by tag. Um, we have a cleaning page here somewhere. Uh, probably had up here. <laughs> cleaning plugins. <laughs> hey oh, <laughs> it's broken. That's cool. I wonder why. Let's have a look, shall we? Oh my, yeah, okay. Right, so this is related to um, the CFG generator overhaul. And I'll just explain the error here briefly. So on the website that's deployed beta or, or the non-beta website, when you get an error like this, this is an internal server error, HTTP code 500, I don't display that information to users. You get this page and I get an email that has this information 
The email isn't quite as helpful as this exact page, though. And so just to break down what's happening here. There's some code that I'm using somewhere. There's all It's all over the place, right? It's not even just limited to code on this page. There's actually a query manager that is filtering on a field here. It has plugin, right? And this syntax has plugin double underscore exact equals empty brackets. This query syntax was to say, give me a mod that has no plugins. We don't do it that way now. Um, I'm going to have to write a new manager to do that. Uh, but we, we would do that in a different way. We don't have the has plugin field anymore. We have plugins as a field to access the other data table. So, so anyways, this is blowing up on that. Um, it says cannot resolve has plugin into field. And then it's giving me a list of the fields. I nuked a bunch of fields that were just crufty and never used throughout the years. Um, they're all gone. And so I didn't, you know, I'm apparently still using that in this code. So let's go to dynamic pages. This is cleaning. Yeah. Mod with plugins. Oh, okay. Yeah. So with plug this code right here with plugins is a query manager. Oop. And that's this right here. I'm not going to fix this right now because I'm actually not sure what the I'm not sure what the python is going to look like for this, but it'll be it'll be different, right? It'll be like uh, All right, well, let's try um Do the shell here. Just a real quick jump off the deep end. Bear with me. Mod objects filter. So hold up here. So first of all, we're gonna get we're gonna get one two hundred. I don't know what mod this is, but we're gonna get one just to play with here. This is fix those bastard rope fences. Good pick. All right, so this one actually has no plugins. It's perfect. Okay, yeah. It's not a thing you can call just like that. You have to actually do that. So I think the query would look something like this. Oh, hey. Cool. <laughs> I think that's it, right? Let's see. We'll just take the last one. Oh, whoa. Whoops. Don't try that at home. That's like a div divide by zero. Negative indexing, not supportive. That's divide by zero level of uh, crazy there. We're just going to go with number 20 then. Fine. HD architecture meshes. Indeed. No plugins. Okay, so yeah, cool. So this is the code, the Python code now. Looks just like this. Filter, plugins, none. So let's fix that. Uh, I wonder if this order by name clause is needed too. I don't think it is. Let's see here. Ordering primary key. Maybe we'll want to change that by order by name. I don't know. Probably not. Anyways. Oh, give me. All right. So back here with plugins. No plugins. Okay. We're going to keep the order by name. Plugins. No, 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 that's wrong. That's totally wrong. See, if this were go, I would just do that. 
That's what we want for here. I know. I think that's it. <laughs> Gonzo found another whoopsie. Thank you so much, my man. I appreciate it. So, okay, so, and then this is a, a Django query syntax for not equal to none, so I think is what we want. Let's see here. Okay, no, that's not it at all. Okay, well, I digress. I'll fix that later. But that's a whoopsie. And yeah, gotten so feel free to toss that one my way on here. We can fix it live. We'll do it live. And uh, also I wanted to mention too, I am uh, in the process of setting up a MWSE with wine so I can properly judge Modathon stuff. If there's any interest in people, you know, hanging out and doing that, I might do that later today or tomorrow. So, you know, let me know, folks. We can join in and have some fun fishing. Gonzo has an issue here. On the graphics overhaul list, I'm pretty sure. Section 8 says, yes. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Gonzo, for that. appreciate that. Since we put BSOM on that list. Yeah. Okay. Good catch. Uh, so let's go to data seeds. And so, yeah, I'll probably um, tomorrow afternoon have a little break after the stream. And then in the evening, I'll do like an MWSC jam impromptu shotgun stream. We'll get it set up. Uh, so right now, as of right now, I've only done... Um, Okay. I've only done just the basic setup, and I'll show you what I've done here. Uh, let's see. Uh, this is a configuration file for my wine setup using the wine command line thing that I wrote myself. And uh, really of note here, we just have a DXVK configuration. I think I want 2.2. I'm using Glorious Egg Roll Wine, which is uh, kind of like Proton, but not exactly. And then I've got some DLL overrides that were suggested by our friend from Discord, Magamo. Um, and I believe this is the syntax when you're passing in DLL overrides with an environment variable. You have to separate them with a semicolon like this. So anyway, we're doing a, D a DX8 override to uh, MGE. We got a MWSE override for those DLLs. And then I probably won't use CSSE beyond just firing up to see it. But that's what that is. That's a construction kit update. So... Uh, let's see, usage notes for store entrance chimes. Thank you, Gonzo. Good call out. Let's take a small 6.x diversion and fix that. As you can see, I got my hands full with plenty of things to fix. But when we're done, we're going to have a glorious CFG generator. And so if I can just take a step back and say, my goal with this work, 5.10, is going to have a CFG generator that you can copy and paste the output from. And it is 100% accurate for your setup. Including the ability to say, you know, oh, my path isn't home username or C, whatever. It's, you know, X drive, you know, Morrowind games with a Z, whatever. You can set whatever you want. We're going to include that in this update, too. It's going to be the most powerful config update. It's going to be the biggest website update since we had grouped mod lists. Um, it's going to be huge. And it will fix basically all the major complaints people have with some of the instructions we present. Let's see what we got here. You're updating Gonzo. I'm curious about your thoughts on what we could say here instead. All right, yes. entrance chimes. There it is. Conspicuously missing. That's a whoopsie indeed. Skip the plugin regardless. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. That's true. Anytime it's on a list, it's paired with BCOM, really. So, yeah. I dig it. We'll do it. Objects clutter. Take me there. I just had the thought in my head of the Black Flag song TV party, but it's MWSE party. 
We got to do that cover. <laughs> All right. And if you've never heard that song, uh, go listen to it. <laughs> I don't want to get copyrighted. Otherwise, I'd put it on right now and subject you to it. <laughs> uh, if you're following a mod list. Yeah, that made me LOL. It's like I almost like did one of those LOL moments when I had the Black Flag song thing in my head. That song will probably be in my head all day now. That's that, that bass riff that, that, that it's got. Yeah, MWSC party tonight. It's a little bit of a mouthful. It doesn't really work that well, actually, but we'll do it. <laughs> it never stopped me before. <laughs> All right, we'll put a little note in here for folks that we added this one because it was missing. Also, note, here we go. We got a new major version. Going to be lots of MWSC partying very soon. Yeah, actually, it says Section 8. And actually, I'm glad you mentioned that Um, because I wanted to float another idea here further to a discussion that we had i think with el tariel a few weeks ago about some tr spells they wanted to pour and kind of like what's the status of can we do this can we do that with open mw lua and during the 2022 marathon uh erm you may know from tesmp and also for his work on open mw lua's ui framework and i had a running list of MWSE projects that we could actively port to MWSE Lua. It was kind of like a click up. It was, it was one of those like issue tracker websites that I frankly wouldn't use again. I think we're just going to do it on GitLab. But basically we had a list of tickets, for lack of a better term, that would list a mod, kind of what it did, and what features are needed in OpenMW Lua to do it. And I talked to Erm. I mentioned this last week, I think, on the stream and uh, with you folks, and there was a warm reception to the idea, and I talked to Erm about it, and he is also down to bring back the list, and uh, I, I think it could be not just like a what can we port list, but also like just in general, like what is possible, you know, got a couple ideas sort of fermenting in my brain, you know, that it would be good to put to paper as it were, and if somebody else wanted to do them, you know, even... Um, I don't have the monopoly on ideas at all, you know. Um, so anyways, that's something I want to do. And I was thinking I might create a GitLab repository. I don't know. <laughs> Section 8 says, I'm so excited to have the space for that party mod I've been talking about. It just sounds crazy fun to play. When you say that, all I can think of is Andrew WK. We're going to have a party. <laughs> Which has to be the theme song, I think. All right, so I'm open to names for this repo, but I want to call it something like uh, we're going to have a party of six Casades. Yeah, oh, man, that sounds like wild times indeed. Hope you got enough skooma. Thinking about calling the project OpenMW Lua Skunk Works. And if you're not familiar with the term skunk works, this is a term born out of Lockheed Martin, who are aerospace developers for a long time. And this is just what they call their experimental stuff. Um, and I think it's kind of a fun term we could use. I don't know. Um, do you have lots of people tell you that you look like Andrew WK? <laughs> Sometimes, yeah, I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of going for that uh, with the white t-shirt thing. Hank Hill would be impressed by my white t-shirt collection, honestly. Um, you know, between, so between my, like, beard and my long hair and 
that is actually not a picture of me on my discord profile that's andrew wk like mid headbang but like the resemblance is thankfully uncanny so i don't know i'm not going to create this right now but if anybody has an idea about what we could call the project space for lua projects you know where we would put both new ideas but also uh how to port existing things that exist for mwsc lua you know this is going to be the incubator for that maybe we call it incubator i don't know um Please help me out with the name idea here. I'm not, I'll am not. i keep this tab open. But this is where I would like to put it, and we'll create issues for each idea. We'll sort of say, like, okay, uh, you know, Tamriel Rebuilt has these spells. This is what they do with M MWSE. And then, you know, folks who know can chime in and say, well, this is what we have for OpenMW, and this is what we need, and blah, 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 and this is the related issue, and so forth. And it would be cool to, like, have sort of a, you know, like a bridge between modders and their ideas and and the team, you know, developing the Lua API. So cool. Gonzo says Skunkworks is a great name. I'll probably go with it. I'll sit on it for a minute though. Um so anyways, cool. Um uh, 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 left off the list by mistake. Good, good, very good. I'm starting to get a really large unstaged area here. I'll commit that after the stream probably. <laughs> good find Gonzo. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mm, oh, yeah, and I was looking for the sound before we go back to 6.x extravaganza. Let's take a look here. Oh, man, this is exciting, too. Animation bindings for Lua. Woo. Yikes. Yeah, this is the one. This one, too. So... There is an issue, actually, that we should look at. They're trying to decide what's going to be in OpenMW 0 0.49. So zero, OpenMW 0 0.48 just came out. Hooray, congratulations to the team. Props to everybody. Go out there, use it, play it. But we're already talking about the next release and getting ready to do that. Hopefully, it's not two years before it comes out. I don't want to jinx us. Jinx us. <laughs> um... But I think you're going to see it a lot sooner. Don't quote me. Please, for the love of Todd, don't quote me. I didn't. <laughs> but what I want to show you folks here is what the team is trying to do. Uh, this is another sound MR by our man Zach. Hmm. Nuts. Where did this go? There's an issue Peter McKee filed. Oh, it's a, we're not looking at issues again. Jeez. <laughs> Jinxed. Altario says, Jinx 49 will have 54 RCs. You know, I mean, if it has to happen, it has to happen. But uh, I'm not saying I know things. <laughs> where are we here all right so there was an issue filed where we're trying to gather information about what is going to be included in 0 0.49 and it is a really exciting list and it's not like bam this is it this is what's going to be in 0 0.49 it's a uh, you know this is a hobby project everybody works on for fun so we don't know what's going to be in there here we go but we're trying to figure that out, right? So we don't end up with a two-year release candidate cycle. So I'd encourage you to check out 7178 issue on GitLab. I'm actually going to put that in here for you folks if you want to check it out. But we see a lot of exciting stuff in here, right? MWScript Lua API. You can interact with MWScript from Lua. Possibilities there are huge. Uh, Zach had a really clever way of triggering sound using this, um, for example. Preserve refnum when moving an item to from inventory. I think this is more of like a, you know, QOL improvement, right? Like things will work more in a sane way um, rather than a feature. Lua API for spells and magic effects. Now, this is not create, you know, your meteor shower spell yet. Um, but it's like the beginnings of that. 
And if you want to see an example of how that's in use, and maybe we'll do that at a later date when we're actually working on some of these projects, you can check the basic needs mod, which uses spell effects to implement thirst and hunger and all those things. Uh, Lua API for creating new records. We got it. Uh, I think I demonstrated that in the stream previously with uh, 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 MD's lightning rod replacer, where we're dynamically on the fly replacing the vanilla rods in TR anywhere else uh, with Lua spawned dynamic ones. That's not released by me yet. Um, I do plan to contribute that upstream to Melchior Dark. Um, I just we have a bug in OpenMW at the moment. These things don't have LOD, so when you unload them, they pop out, and it's kind of hideous. We'll get there. Control GUI from Lua, and we'll look at that one in a minute. This is the big one, folks. This is the one I think that will basically enable us to have like a proper controller UI. And I'm actually holding off on a playthrough on my Steam Deck because I want this <laughs> so much. Um, this one right here, Lua API for RTT viewports. In other words, you may have heard the term Scene Graph API used by such mods as uh, Ashfall. That's this. Uh, I don't know if this is going to be in 0 0.49, honestly, but it's on the list. Um, any interested party, definitely check it out. Um, D-hard coding spellcasting is underway, but it's like a colossal effort, and I don't really think you're going to see this in 0 0.49. Sounds and music, though, we very well could, and we actually have two efforts. So this one came in from A. Kartanov. And, um, I mean, it's, so I actually haven't looked too closely at Zach's MR. I don't know what's in there. <laughs> Section 8 says, the existing setup for scene graph is, uh, but it's there. Yeah, it's there, right? I can't comment on it really a whole lot. We'll take a look at it in a sec. Um, I can't comment, comment on it a whole lot, but, um, you know, it was one of those things that OpenMW was never going to have for a long time, the rumors said. But, you know, here it is. We're doing it. Nothing is not possible. Everything is possible. Yeah, so... Control the GUI. Oh, no, we were looking at this one by Kartanov. And so this one can do... Um, for things that have sound records, you can give it parameters, right? Like the various options you can set in the CS for sound. Um, but it also can play... Um, just things from the VFS with default parameters. You can't really do like a pitch or whatever with these things as I understand it from reading the MR details. Um, so this is one approach. Um, we have this one from Zach that's been kind of in the oven for a while. Which seems like a bit more expansive because we got video even here. Um, which actually sounds really exciting. Um, Section 8 says, I read it a bit. Dupes every object in order to actually work. Hacky, fixable. Oh, scene graph talk. Yeah, okay, okay. So that'd be this guy right here. Lua Art API for RTT viewports by our friend Cody Glassman, a.k.a. Wazabear. Love you, man. And so, yeah, it's a little, you know, like ooh, a lot of this indexing stuff. Ooh, it feels a little uh, from a layman's perspective. Um, but, like, this is not unlike how we do um the other ui stuff so i mean i don't hate this it's a little verbose and deep but like hey you know you can wrap this right look at my natural character growth and decay code for you for ui stuff um you know and i've wrapped lewis stuff successfully to make it at least you know somewhat palatable so you could do that here in theory you wanted to make like a turn the pan red from heat function you could do that so anyway, that's exciting, but I, uh, I really doubt we're going to see this in 0 0.49 just because it's like a, that's a heavy hit right there. Same, same for spellcasting. There's just so much going on there because spellcasting is actually, correct me if I'm wrong, folks, heavily tied to um, animations, the animation of doing it. Excuse me. And there's more to consider there than you might think than the, the uninformed might think. So maybe we'll see it, you know? Um, maybe we won't, though. But for sure, I think I think we will see this, which is really exciting. Control the GUI from Lua. 
boom, there you go. We're opening the barter window with Lua code. You cannot do that now. Okay, so if we look, for example. Oh my God, give me my game. If we look, for example, at uh, natural character growth and decay, for example, my own mod. Um, you can't exactly pause the game. Now, Zach, the clever wizard among us, has figured out a way to have a pause facsimile that more or less works. Um, I wasn't clever enough to figure that out. And so I just got a normal menu that you draw on the game. Um, most other mods that have GUIs, like Attend Me, which is the follower HUD, are very happy to just draw on the game while the game time is running. Um, but what this will allow us to do now, this code that I was just looking at by Peter McKeith, will allow us to actually set the pause mode properly, like at the engine level. So let's, uh, if I hit the N key here, this is my unpaused, and if I hit B, this is from the MBSP uncap mod, who took uh, inspiration from my menu, certainly. But yeah, you can see here, I can happily move around and, and do stuff. The game keeps going. Um, you know, so this means that we would be able to actually pause the game, like what you get when I do this, or if I right click to bring up the menu. Um, and so in theory, it may also, I didn't totally look at everything we get here, but yeah, yeah. So here we go. Uh, so what we're looking at here, the I dot UI, that bit is important. If you're not aware, that is the interface which allows you to use the code built into the engine, but also override it. And so what we would do here is you might say, okay, we're going to uh, replace the inventory window and you might have a more controller friendly inventory window. And I've seen some of Zach has cats work on it and very promising. I'm excited, very excited to play OpenMW on my Steam Deck with a good controller GUI, maybe very soon. But this code looks good. This code looks pretty good. Man, how did we... We got way off the deep end here. We're supposed to be doing 6.x extravaganza, and we're, like, looking at Lua features for 0 0.49. Um, right. Uh, kind of got off the deep end talking about Lua and doing things, you know, um, with MW script. So this mod that we were looking at before we went off the deep end is implemented fully with MW script, cleaned and uploaded by our friend here, Citadel535. But it's an old one, um, and there are some janky aspects to it, and they talk about it here. Um, so let's see here. Da, 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 da. The mod decides in real time what cells to play sound effects in or not. While it's pretty good at getting it right, it will very rarely play sound effects where you wouldn't want them, i.e. underground, or not play them where you would want them. Houses, for example. You can edit the settings for cell in-game by using the weather one. Gonzo says, I appreciate looking at, at the upcoming Lua stuffs. Yeah, hey, I like doing it too. And I think we should do it, you know, to keep jazzed. And we'll build the uh, the Skunk Works repo. And we'll look, we'll make it a weekly thing where we look at that. And we'll try to incubate ideas. So uh, anyway, back to this thing, though. So you get this weather wand item to basically unbork cells, you know. Um, it's a clever approach, to be sure. Clever approach with what with the tools that MW Script allows. But yeah, you know, so sometimes they, they mention down here too, compatibility issues here, yeah. Da, 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 da. There was a... Right, okay. So, this is an important note about this mod, and and good. it's a good to know point because this mod will produce some janky results sometimes because in Morrowind, weather changes don't register with the game until the transition from one type of weather to another is complete. If you enter an interior during this transition, then the interior effects for the previous weather type will play. So it will appear to not be raining because it's transitioning if it was raining going to sunny. But then you'll go inside and still hear rain, potentially, you know. Um, this is something that a potential Lua weather mod wouldn't suffer from because there's that transition time which you could dynamic. I think it's a... Correct me if I'm wrong, but it's a... No, not that one. One of these, one of these fallbacks, somewhere weather. We've got a bunch of weather fallbacks. 
It's one of these. Yeah, here we go. The transition is like one of these numbers, I think. Um, in any case, you know, a Lua mod would in theory be able to reach into the engine and, you know, do it more intuitively. So let's go ahead and add this one. We're going to put it on the list nonetheless. And thanks to my buddy Ezzy for sharing this one. It's apparently one that I didn't know about, but uh, we need. So let's see if I got a weather. I think I may have already added this one. Yeah. Blight weather pack. Yeah, because we're going to have a new weather category. I love that. We don't have a weather API for Lua quite yet, but we can still jazz up the weather. Put some uh, thunderstorms in the Ashlands. Give us that lightning. That sweet, sweet lightning. Okay. I'm paranoid about losing input box stuff, so before I click save changes, I'm going to copy it. Nice, GitLab. Okay, not bad. I had that open for a minute and was kind of expecting it to blow up. Cool, all right. So, yeah, two stuffs there for weather. Um, very exciting. And, yeah, just a final note about uh, the Lua stuff. Uh, I encourage taking a look at 7178 issue. I put the link in the chat there. This is kind of the game plan for Lua for 0 0.49. Um, and some of it is a little bit jargony, you know, like you wouldn't, you know, know what some of this kind of is. Like this RefNum one is a little bit opaque um, if you're not initiated into implementation details. But nonetheless, this is kind of a view of like what we want to do. And uh, kind of a reminder that, yeah, you know, more releases are coming. Yay. So props and congrats to the team. I love you all. All right. Cool. <laughs> so, yeah, that's one I added already to my local setup. And uh, I think it, it fits well. I should mention here, too. It fits well on iHeart Vanilla. That one's going on iHeart Vanilla, too. I don't like to change those ones a lot. I don't like to add a lot of things to them because they're nice and sweet. But I feel like Interiors Project and this one are, are pretty nice touches. And I think it's worth bloating the list over. Cool. All right. So, back to my config now. We can kind of look at, because uh, a few things have uh, come my way. Uh, our friend Glassy, I think I said their username right, has suggested many things over the past few months uh, on Discord. And they dropped, uh, let's see, recently we've got this, yeah, Caldera Governor's Manor Redone. This one looks pretty sweet. Um, and it's somewhat of a new addition, but yeah, check it out. I added this one locally. Excuse me. Looking good. Ooh, they got that Rocky West gash. I do love that one so much. It looks so good, but it killed my frame rate. Really killed it. So, yeah, anyway, uh, looks great. And the one thing note to note about this one, though. Games, uh, city, mod, city. Uh, so there is some patching that is required for this one. Um, at least with the latest version of BCOM, this path grid deletion does nothing. Either from the main BCOM plugin or the path grid plugin shipped with BCOM. There is apparently no path grid provided or changed by BCOM for the governor's hall. However, this one, you do want to do. And so anyway... Um, so a little bit of TS3 command deletage. Um, I wonder if we can't, by the way, produce a Delta plugin, filtered plugin. We almost certainly could. Ooh, so this is going to have to be a topic for another stream. We're kind of running short on time here, and I don't want to go too far off the deep end. But this is another thing we could easily do with Delta plugin. We could produce a filtered version of BCOM, removing the Governor's Hall uh, interior record. I'm sure we could do it. Um, 
And it maybe would be more intuitive for folks to use the OpenMW specific tooling. So anyway, something to think about. Great, nonetheless, though, great mod. We're going to throw that on there. And thank you to Glassy for, as always, uh, you know, throwing the new content my way. I do appreciate it. All right. I'm going to put this one in the cities category, but I feel like it could also be under architecture. Uh, I could spend an entire stream thinking about how to properly categorize or name things. Somebody save me. All right. Enough of that. On to the business. And, uh... I'm tempted to go in-game and show y'all that one because it looks pretty cool, but I got my potato gear here, so... I know I've said this a million times, but maybe tonight I'll drag my gaming PC out here. All right. Caldera Governor's Manor. But what was the other one? Let's see here. Ooh, okay. Hey. Section 8, I see your plug in Discord here. Let's just go ahead and uh, pull this one up. What do we got here? Ooh, cool. Nice. Are you thinking of Priory Gonzo Game says, no, no, there was a different one at the risk of that. We have so much conversation happening on our Discord channel, and I am so thankful for it. But uh, let me try to scroll up here a little bit. No, 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 no. Bear with me. Definitely love how much conversation we have in there. It's awesome. Never imagined it would turn out like this. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. It was right around the time uh, they were talking about dead NPCs with Sophie. Dead NPCs in Balmora, which I would love to get uh, to the bottom of. Section 8 says, I'd love to have more people try it. Super willing to extend it. Props, and thank you for making this. We're going to take a closer look at this. I'm super pumped. I love the idea of using uh, G7's Rust stuff. I feel like I'm overdue to make something with Rust. I hate to sound like that guy. Got a couple Go things under my belt. I like Go, you know. Memory safe in a different way. Uh, uh, where was it? Wow, I've scrolled back a lot, and I'm not finding it. Wait, wait, wait. Sheesh, okay, I think we're finally getting there. Cool, okay. Yeah, I got respect for G7, of course. Uh, seems like a righteous fella. Hunt Osama, there it is. I feel like we're getting closer. Yeah, this is it. This was worth scrolling. Trust me, this was worth the wait for. This other one just... Little Landscapes, Bitter Coast Waterway. This is outstanding. Nice. Very. We have to go in game and look at this. Potato be damned, we're going. You folks can deal with it. <laughs> and promise, I promise I'll fix it. Oh yeah, and this will give me the um this will give me the opportunity to get a recording of the bug I found in 0 0.49. Here we go. I told you about this one, Gonzo. The flashing normal maps. Here we go. I think it's a, unfortunately, I think it's a Linux only bug. Might be related to Mesa. I'm not sure. I've got an Intel GPU on this thing, of course. Uh, Gonzo says, oh, dude, this guy has been cranking these out. There's like four of them now. Really? There's more of them? Help me out. I, I missed the memo. I'll check their profile. Um, but yeah, this one is just like, oh, amazing. Looks amazing. Oh, boy. Here we go. All right. So yeah, this is the, you see the flashing normals there? It's like a disco party. <laughs> little awkward. Uh, what's also a little awkward is I can't move my character. Oh, am I like overburdened? No, just not taking input. There we go. So yeah, there you go. That's uh. 
I don't think you folks using Windows or Mac will probably maybe Mac will see this. I don't know. Mac's got like a crap OpenGL implementation, so maybe they have this issue. Um, I don't know what's going on. Happens on my Steam Deck. Has an AMD graphics card in that one. Also using Mesa um, for OpenGL implementation. Um, and yeah, I mean, it just looks like the normal is broken. Anyway, that's not why I went in here. Just wanted to get a video record for if when I file a bug about this. Let's go look. Yeah, just look at it over here. Wow, we so nice. Just look at this. It's like, ooh. So yeah, we'll be looking at the other ones made by this fella, and we'll be adding all of these because this is just like nice, so nice. Fills it in really cool here. There's even got a little bat. You got some bats spawned here. I don't think I've seen bats really too often. It's nice to see those. Paste, paste the links in Discord. Thank you, Gonzo. Yes, appreciate it. Awesome. So, yeah, well, we're adding this one and the other ones, too. And I feel like in time, we're going to, like, really have almost all the landscape fleshed out. Like, we're getting there. It's finally happening. <laughs> all right. Let's go back to the list because we're kind of getting to the end here. Issue roundup. I'm going to put that one on the... Little landscapes. Okay, so we got a little series here. Oh, man, this is really exciting. Jump to present here on the Discord channel. Path to Pelagiad. Oh, man, nice. A basin. Pulu egg mine. Nice. Vivek Islands. Very nice. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. Oh, man, there's so many of these. <laughs> Great. So we'll be adding all these probably tomorrow on the stream, but I'm going to add them, you know, after I get a bite to eat here. <laughs> um... Awesome, let's put this in the ticket. Mm, that's right, we have the properly separated landscapes category now. Now, suddenly, this category makes sense. More sense, maybe, I would argue. Uh, all right, we're going to take a closer look at this one tomorrow. Uh, Section 8, thank you so much for sharing this one. Um... Since we're all we all got randomizer fever now, I ended like four randomizer mods uh, <laughs> earlier today that we'll get to eventually on here. But uh, very cool stuff. Um, cool and yeah, so it's a nice, easy to use, executable. Very nice, very very nice. I'll be giving this a try today too. Um, all right, let's save the change. Cool, yeah. Lots of cool stuff in this landscape section. Feeling good. All right. Kind of simple, but I did it by request, Section 8 said. Cool. Hey, that's great, though. That's the best project motivator, honestly. Um, I created Action Camera Swap. Action Camera Swap. Because somebody on Discord asked if it was possible to basically do that. Can we move the camera in third person when you're sheath your weapon? And so I was like, I don't know. Let me try it. And in five minutes I had it, you know? So, I mean, I didn't think of that idea myself. I actually forget who came up with that idea. If you are the person who came up with that idea and you remember that you are, please tell me and I'll give you credit. Okay. Well, we didn't deploy yet, but let's do it now. Uh, <laughs> Again, we got a broken CFG generator and other pages at the moment, so uh, yikes. Please bear with me. Whoops. All right, cool. That's deploying. Uh, the Summer Mod Jam is well underway at the moment. We're going to be looking at new stuff from that probably next week. Yours truly will be judging content uh, following the Mod Jam. Really looking forward to that. And yes, yeah, stay tuned for tomorrow's stream. As always, thank you for joining. We're going to have the MWSC party also at some point tomorrow night um, in the evening, my time. I'm in Central USA. Um, so yeah, feel free to join us for that. I would love some suggestions. I'm intending to first try out the Quick Loop mod, just because that's like one of my, <laughs> on the top of my wish list things for OpenMW Lua. I think Ferris is working on that. Don't want to bug him too much, but... Uh, so I'm going to start by looking at Quick Loop, but if you got MWSC suggestions, things that I should look at, please bring them to the table, drop them in Discord, um, and I'll make a list of stuff. But yeah, generally we're going to be playing MWSC for, you know, Mod Jam content, so, so yeah. 
and uh, and we'll continue work on this, and uh, in due time we'll have better usage instructions. Uh, below line 1,000 now, Gonzo. Wow, nice. You're crushing it. Awesome. That's huge. Um, I feel like the last big hump is going to be going through and updating the usage notes. Um, I don't think there's that many mods that have list-specific or context-specific instructions, but uh, we can do it. And the and the sort of the this framework that I built for... Um, the data structure of it all this can apply to usage notes too i think you know we'll have uh we'll have the related mod we'll have what mod lists it applies to uh we don't need a file name we don't need order number we don't need this you know a bunch of other things we won't need it'll be a pretty simple data structure i'll probably i'll probably end up creating that tonight uh but yeah very exciting times and uh i'm hoping that we can do uh a thing where we take the usage notes and we can also show those on the CFG generator, right? So, like, if you need to um, make a, a settings change, we can show that with a specific, a special usage note for the config generator or something like that. I don't know. I'm thinking out loud here. <laughs> All right. Well, it's another green day on the stream. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Happy modding. Have a lovely day, and I'll see you next time.